let's talk about acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is made from acetylcoenzyme A. Choline comes from lecithin, which is a fatty acid that contains choline. We'll talk about acetylcholine being in the neuromuscular junction. The neuromuscular junction is the place where the neurotransmitter that signals voluntary muscle movement, muscles that you can move, striated muscle, is acetylcholine. The receptor type on the neuromuscular junction is nicotinic. So here we have a cartoon of the neuromuscular junction. The lower motor neuron comes from the spinal cord and releases acetylcholine into the synaptic space, which is sensed by nicotinic receptors. And so this is how lower motor neuron communicates with voluntary muscle, striated skeletal muscle, using acetylcholine as the signal and nicotinic receptors as the sensors to give you an understanding of how the system works, we'll talk about myasthenia gravis. Myasthenia gravis is a disease process that causes weakness. In myasthenia gravis, antibodies block the receptors at the neuromuscular junction. These antibodies are designed to go attack viruses and bacteria and other germs, but here this body has made a mistake and it's made antibodies against its own nicotinic receptors in the neuromuscular junction. And because they block the receptors in the neuromuscular junction, myasthenia gravis causes weakness. So myasthenia gravis is weakness caused by circulating antibodies that block acetylcholine receptors at the postsynaptic neuromuscular junction, inhibiting the effect of the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. Well, drugs that mimic the effect of acetylcholine will be used to not only diagnose but treat myasthenia gravis. We'll see acetylcholine in the autonomic nervous system and we're going to talk a lot about that next time. So the neurotransmitter that signals parasympathetic smooth muscle movement at the organs is acetylcholine and the receptor type is muscarinic. In this class, I'm not going to make you know the different subtypes of muscarinic receptors. They're called muscarinic receptors because of their high affinity to muscarine, which is a toxin. Notice the same cartoon with different labels. Here is a parasympathetic synapse. You guys might be familiar with a parasympathetic neuron or a parasympathetic nerve, the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve signals the heart, the lungs, the bowels, and so it carries parasympathetic neurons. The vagus nerve carries parasympathetic neurons, and those neurons use acetylcholine as the chemical signal, and muscarinic receptors that are on the parasympathetic nervous system organs to sense the acetylcholine. Sjogren's syndrome is very similar to myasthenia gravis as far as pathophysiology, however, the symptoms are different. In Sjogren's syndrome, antibodies block the muscarinic receptors on salivary glands. Those salivary glands are what make your mouth wet. And lacrimal glands, lacrimal glands are what make tears. Sjogren's syndrome is caused by antibodies that block muscarinic receptors on the salivary and lacrimal glands, resulting in dry eye and dry mouth. Sjogren's syndrome is dry eye and dry mouth caused by circulating antibodies that block acetylcholine at the muscarinic receptors on lacrimal and salivary glands, inhibiting the effect of the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. So drugs that mimic the effects of acetylcholine will be used to diagnose and treat Sjogren's syndrome. Drugs that mimic the effect of acetylcholine are called cholinomimetic. So we'll use cholinomimetics. Drugs that mimic the effect of acetylcholine, cholinomimetics will be used in the treatment of bowel problems, bladder problems, glaucoma, which is elevated pressures in the eyes, myasthenia gravis, Sjogren's syndrome, anticholinergic toxicity, and the reversal of paralyzing agents used in anesthesia. Drugs that mimic the effect of acetylcholine, cholinomimetics will be used in Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's disease as well.